mercies never fail. How good is he? He saves, oh, he rescues, he redeems, oh, his grace has kept his free. How good is he?
Welcome everyone, great to see you here on with us. Welcome to you if you're online with us uh, right now or whether you're on catch up later on. We're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper and so again if you're online with us you might like to find some uh, bread and wine so you can participate and join in as we uh, remember, as we proclaim the death of Jesus together here. We're going to bring our Praise to God. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign that we are here for you. Let our shout be your anthem, your renown. Fill the skies. Let's stand together. Let's praise God together.
salvation hope to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden almighty God to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Great to see you. Let's welcome someone. Say hello to someone. Greet someone. Then find our seats. Or find your seats, then welcome someone. I don't mind.
Okay, so that's really good. Welcome, everybody. And uh, it's beautiful, sunny autumn. We're into autumn. The picture has changed. And uh, we await to put the snow picture in later on. But there you go. Not today, but in the coming days. But autumn is here. And I think half term is here as well, isn't it? So uh, well done. You're here. And uh, uh, if you're away on half term holiday, but you're joining us right now, it's great you can do that. And uh, God bless you as you're with us today. Should we just hear about a few things happening? Destination Bethlehem. We're meeting after the church. If you've got time to stay behind for about 20 minutes, go downstairs, grab your tea or coffee and biscuit, and then bring it back up here. And we're going to do an overview of the dates and what's happening and uh, what you could do. And there's a piece of paper you can fill in with what you can volunteer to do. Um, if you've done it for the last eight years, it's not a great difference. But if you're new here, we'd love to tell you what Destination Bethlehem is all about. So that's today, straight after the service. Okay. Next Sunday is our treat or treat party at Ken Village Hall. It's for Muddy Church, but you're ever so welcome if you're in this congregation, Muddy Church, Mosaic. Um, just come along, bring friends and family along as well and we're going to have games and uh, we're doing a, a new addition to what I put in the advertising, we're going to have pick and mix as well, pick by popular mix. request there you go. Pick and a mix. little pick and mix shop but it's free Okay. so you get your pick and mix, if that brings you along <laughs> that's what we're going to do ok, that's good, <laughs> we'll explain that to some people So um, uh, and then uh, as we go into November, first weekend in November, two weeks time we have Tim Alford who is the National Director of Limitless the youth and children's movement of the Elim Pentecostal churches in the UK and Ireland. And Tim trains ministers and um, is committed to equipping leaders to communicate the gospel. He speaks at really big conferences and things, so we're so fortunate to have him um, come in from Malvern on the 6th of November. He's speaking in our morning service. Yeah. That'll be about raising up generations, new generations, which we're all committed to. So make yeah. sure you're here. He's with us for lunch with youth leaders and children's and families workers. And then in the afternoon, late afternoon, he's going to do an event with young adults, children and youth. Okay. So make sure you, um, if you've got anybody you think could come along to that event in the afternoon, make sure they're invited along. Yeah. It's a really important dimension of our ministry and mission as a church. And we're grateful to God for um, so good signs of growth in that whole area. But we, we want to press on more. And uh, it's great that we can... And speak uh, to Luke if you are interested in knowing more yeah. details. If you want to bring a youth club in the evening, yes. um, regional youth groups and clubs are yes. invited to come along to our the event in the afternoon. So speak to Luke or to us if you want okay. to come along. And then following on from last week, uh, as we uh, celebrated Believer's Baptism, if that's something you are wanting to think about, talk about, respond to, uh, please speak to one of us. Uh, and we'd love to have a conversation with you about that. We want to encourage that and uh, see this baptistry open again and uh, more people being uh, baptised, declaring faith in Believer's Baptism. So some of the stuff happening uh, in the uh, coming weeks, take note of that. Um, okay, I think the children, young people are going to move out to uh, their uh, all-aged kind of learning activities going on around the building. So we will catch up with you later on. As we worship God together, we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus, our Saviour, as we come and share in the Lord's Supper together. Let's hear some uh, words that invite us, explain to us uh, what we are doing. While they were eating together, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, before handing it to his disciples with the words, Take and eat, for this is my body. Then he took a cup, 
And after offering thanks, he passed it to them, saying, Drink from this, each one of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, to make possible forgiveness for all. And uh, let's pray together, and you may like to participate with the uh, words in bold type there. It invites us all to participate in our praying together. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. <coughs> Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And Lord, we thank you for the significance of bread and wine, the Lord's Supper. We remember, we proclaim your death. Until you come again, thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for us. Let's stand together as we worship our Saviour. Oh, the perfect Son of God, in all his innocence, is walking in the death of you and me. He knows what living is, he's acquainted with our grief. The sorrow, sad and suffering, oh, blood and tears. How can it be that there's a God who weeps? There's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Oh, hallelujah to the sad and suffering. Oh, pursue to the sin and 
invite all who know Christ as their Lord and Saviour to share in this communion, Lord's Supper meal with us. Let's examine our lives and let's come with faith and thanksgiving in our hearts. And for those on site, when you came into the building, you'd been given your bread and wine. If you didn't get that and you'd like to participate in this Lord's Supper, Wendy will move us around now, just kind of wave to her. She will pass that to uh, one of these to you. Let's eat, let's drink, let's remember, let's proclaim his death together.
And Lord, in your grace, feed us, nourish us, refresh us for the journey of faith through life and on into all eternity. Amen. As we share in our communion meal together, we're going to welcome Roger and Ross, uh, uh, Ros into the uh, uh, fellowship here. Come and join me up in front here. You looks like you're surprised. That's why I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. Did you know about this? You did. You wait for the moment. moment. That's great. Thank you. Roger, Ros, welcome. Come and... Uh, you've been around, I nearly say forever, not quite forever, <laughs> but... Um, You've been around the place long. It's great that you uh, are being led to be part of the fellowship here. And uh, on such occasions, we like to give the opportunity for you to be able to declare your uh, faith. Uh, and so we're going to uh, let you do that now as I ask these questions to you. So, Roz, Roger, do you declare your faith in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, having found new life in him? And do you believe God has called you to serve Christ as part of this local Baptist church? And do you commit yourselves to love and serve the Lord within this church community and in the world and being filled with the Holy Spirit to fulfil your ministry in the body of Christ? We'd love to welcome you, pray for you. Just move in here a little bit. Come on, some people from the church who are part of the church here. That's a lot of you here. Come and stand here with them. That's now. Let's do it now. Brilliant. Thank you. We like a bit of enthusiasm. Look, that's great. It's like getting married again. Is it like getting married again? Oh, crumb. You haven't got a, we haven't got a present list, have you? <laughs> Let's reach out to these people, welcome them, pray for them. Well done, Sean. That's good to see you down here. That's good. Come out here, John. This is, this is a good side to be on over here. Well done here. And Lord, we thank you so much for church and church family that we can... Be your people together. And we thank you for Roz, for Roger. And Lord, we thank you for their, their story, their testimony of, of faith and salvation, of walking with you, of your blessing upon blessing upon their lives. And Lord, as they are part of the church here, Lord, as we surround them physically and with our prayers, Lord, we, we pray that in your Grace, you would reach down and bless them this day. Fill them with your spirit. And Lord, together as your people, we want to serve your kingdom purposes right now in these days. And so Lord, help us as your people. And Lord, as we pray together as your church family, Lord, would you help those who mourn and grieve this day? Lord, would you help those... Would you heal those who are sick this day? Lord, would you encourage and strengthen those who are discouraged and weary this day? Lord, we rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And Lord, help us to follow you. And so, Lord, we thank you for our, our family meal together here and the fellowship that we share together with you, Lord, and with one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Great, thank you. Welcome, there you go. You're getting welcomed. Good stuff. And uh, on... Tuesday we, we pray together around a whole range of things, not least we were praying for the nation at this time. Um, at that point there was a Prime Minister. Uh, uh, by the end of the week uh, we prayed about our nation, uh, things had changed, but the Evangelical Alliance of which uh, we are uh, very much part of as a church, um, uh, calling us churches up and down the nation to pray as uh, 
our Prime Minister resigned and there's uncertainty and, and well, you know what's going on and uh, we have all kinds of reactions to that. But Lord, we pray, we pray of your church up and down this land today that in the midst of all this chaos that God, you would bring order and peace. And Lord, we, we pray and we may think this is a big prayer we have to pray, but Lord, how we do pray for wisdom and discernment uh, for the government as they seek to choose a new leader. We pray that, Lord. And we pray that our next Prime Minister will bring stability, but will lead with integrity. And Lord, we pray for all those entering this winter in fear and at real risk from the cost of living crisis, that we as the church in this nation will continue to serve them and engage with the government to serve the needs of all our communities more effectively than ever in the season ahead. And so we pray, God, would you move in power so that we, the church, would remember the least, the last, and the lost and show the UK what it means to stand on the rock of ages, even in the middle of great change. God of wind and fire, as your spirit was poured out upon the first disciples, by your love, rest upon us as upon all your church. Enlarge our dreams and infuse our minds, inspire our faith and empower our resolve that growing in the likeness of Christ, we may be unafraid to live this day to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's stand together.
Please sit down as we uh, turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. <clears throat> Pick up in verse 1 and we're going to stay in verse 1. Now, brothers, or now, now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You may read in your translation now concerning spiritual gifts. The wording uh, is in fact uh, spirituals. Uh, or uh, it could uh, read that the things of the Spirit. Now concerning spiritual things of the Spirit. And in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, those spiritual things and uh, uh, we, we'll find out as we go into this chapter, uh, the things of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 are specifically the grace gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that's where we're heading to. So we're dealing with, in 1 Corinthians 12, Spirit of God things. Spirit of God abilities, gifts, not natural human talents, or things. Spiritual things that cannot find their explanation solely in terms of natural human abilities. Those, it says in our uh, church Bibles here, those special abilities the Spirit gives us. Apostle Paul says, what I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. During uh, this year, we, we've touched upon a whole range of ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. Not least, at the beginning of the year, it was the, the fruit of the Spirit that we were exploring and unpacking. And now in 1 Corinthians 12, it is the gifts of of the Spirit, a message of wisdom, uh, a message of knowledge, uh, uh, faith, the, the gifts of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, it sets the scene for us, it's about the things of the Spirit. Why and how come the Apostle Paul is writing, speaking, teaching, preaching like this? Answer, because these are the days of the Spirit. I don't want you, he says, to misunderstand this. I don't want you to be uninformed, ignorant. I don't want you to be unaware. For some, this is complex, often misunderstood, but what I want, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Why is this important? Why do we need to be informed? Because these are the days of the Spirit poured out. It's Acts 2, the day of Pentecost stuff. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen as God pours out the spirit like, like a, a, a tropical downpour as the spirit rains down, as, as God at Pentecost showers blessing down upon people, lavish blessing. And it, it flows and it, and it spreads far and wide. The, the floodgates of grace open up. God said it, it would happen and, and it does. And God pours and he pours and he pours out unrestrained generosity as the Spirit comes. Not measured or, or metered, but poured, poured out, pouring down. Well, in the UK, we, we, we talk about it three times a day. 
the weather and the rain. And, and I, I wrote this down and I went out of our front door and there was one of our neighbours and the first thing they said was, oh, it, it, it's not raining yet. I mean, surely we've got more things to talk about. Uh, and, and I said, no, it's not. I mean, this is the kind of the, the depth of conversation going on. But it, it might later, might in it, or if not later, tonight. Oh, yeah, but, but we need it, don't we? Well, do we? I don't know now. But, uh, and, and this kind of stuff goes on. I walked across the foyer uh, downstairs this morning. Somebody came in, it doesn't matter who, and they said, it's not raining. We, we love to talk about the rain. We do it three times a day, and that's what we love to do, the, uh, the rain. I, I was up here a few weeks ago now, maybe a couple of months ago, and I, I'd come sort of in summer dress mode, and uh, as I was walking back from the meeting, um, we went into downport mode. And it just one of those moments where I, I was trapped between building and, and home, halfway. And it just poured and poured down. And, and I was drenched within seconds. And you could see people driving past laughing. <laughs> Some of you from the meeting drove past laughing. And in that moment, you don't know quite what to do. You sort of, sort of act like, I'm not bothered? Or, or, or do you sort of run for it? According to scientists, that, that running for it... Uh, uh, has proved that uh, if you're caught in a shower, running is the smart thing to do. Although the front of your body will get wet as you run, great these scientists, aren't they, uh, as they work this stuff out, uh, overall you'll end up drier because you will get home quicker. There you go, so <laughs> that I've told you now. So I said to Joe, who was with me, see ya. Uh, and uh, I, I kind of did this, 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 this run for it. And uh, this morning, uh, when I was up, anyway, it was raining. I, and I, I, I started to think, am I going to get up here in the dry? Should I take the car? Or, 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 or what am I going to do? It's just going through my mind. What coat do I need to get up to this place uh, dry? And... That's a good thing to think about physically. But when it comes spiritually, we need to turn up here wet. And we need to go home wetter. Why? Because these are the days of the Spirit poured out. We're in uh, Albania. Uh, we, we, they, our friends there were trying to find out about uh, living in the UK and they, again, they wanted to talk to us about the weather. And they said, it's always raining in, in the UK, isn't it? I, and I, I said, no, not always. Uh, I, I, I said, actually, this summer, uh, we had no rain. Uh, and we went into drought mode. And can you believe it? They couldn't, we couldn't even use, some people were allowed to use their, their hose pipes. And, and we were, actually, it got serious. We were into to drought mode. And if you remember back in those uh, uh, months, a lot has happened in our nation <laughs> since uh, those days. But if you remember back in those days, we were desperate for some rain. We wanted to rain. We needed to rain. Uh, our, our plants needed rain. Our reservoirs needed rain. Our, our hose pipes needed rain. And we, we, we wanted it to rain. I wonder if that drought-like condition that we face actually was speaking to us about our spiritual condition as the church and as a nation, desperate for the rain. But of course, when it rains, what we do is we, we, uh, we react uh, and we head for cover, we head for shelter. I was kind of caught between the church and the building, but I looked for a minute and thought, hey, I, I could go for the bus shelter sort of thing, but then how long am I going to have to wait? Uh, but you, you head for shelter. Uh, or what I do if I'm at the building is I, I go to lost property. There's somebody's umbrella, uh, which is, I don't know whose it is. You can have it back later. Uh, but uh, I just borrow who's ever left their, their umbrella in the church, which is really kind of you. Uh, <laughs> Although I did go home once with frogs. 
<laughs> on it. I don't know whose that was. Must have been one of the children's left their umbrella here. Uh, I do draw a line. I'm a QPR fan. We do not w use Arsenal umbrellas or Chelsea umbrellas or any other London club umbrella, but there you go. Um, this is a little tip for you. What a little Christmas gift. It's what we got Joe, our family. Got her. She, she does guide dogs. She likes dogs. Look at that one. <laughs> one with dogs on like that. Uh, you can get one with cats on if you want or crocodiles on or whatever you like on it, but... Uh, there you go. We, we, we go for the old umbrella job. I, 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 I want to protect myself from the rain. I want to, I want to keep dry. I, 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 I want to say that we, we need to become spiritually an umbrella-free zone here. I, I have a, a kind of fear that what happens if we start thinking about the rain is that what we do physically makes sense. I kind of got home soaking wet. I had to change when I got home. And so physically, I understand why we put the umbrella up, but spiritually, the umbrella of resistance, the umbrella of, of pride, of, of unbelief that I, 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 I don't believe this stuff, the, 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 that umbrella of, of tradition, I, I've done it this way and I'm going to resist. Umbrella of fear. I'm, I'm not sure about this. I've heard about this. I'm, 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 I'm worried about this. The umbrella of self-effort, which in a, a church like us is very easy to go up. The umbrella, I, I will do, rather than, hey, I'm going to receive. Revive your church, O Lord, in grace and power draw near. Speak with the voice that wakes the dead and make your people hear. Revive your church, O Lord. Give Pentecostal showers. The glory shall be all your own. The blessing, Lord, be ours. Revive your church, O Lord. Exalt your precious name. And by your Holy Spirit come and Set our love aflame. Revive your church, O Lord, and let your power be shown. The gifts and graces shall be ours. The glory yours alone. God pours out his spirit upon us. Be careful of spiritual umbrellas that shelter us from that wonderful spirit blessing that God pours down. Spiritual things, says the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 12, things of the Spirit, because these are the days of the Spirit, the Spirit is poured out uh, upon us. Spiritual things, now possible because of the very Christianity that flows from the crucified body of Jesus. We've we just been celebrating, remembering, proclaiming his death on the cross. And if you remember on the cross, remember that, that that soldier came and pierced his side with a spear and immediately there was this flow of blood and water. The blood and water flow states something final. The death of Jesus for us. And the blood and water flow also states something actual. The life of Jesus for us. For here is blood which speaks of, of new life through his substitutionary atoning sacrifice for us. Of our lives now made clean. Of, of redemption, a reconciliation, of forgiveness for sins, a, a great salvation. And the water which speaks of the Spirit, the, the living water flowing out into parts, dry, worn-out lives like ours, released to us through the crucified Saviour. Blood and water. It is the power of the cross and Pentecost. The 
power of the cross and Pentecost at work in our lives. That the cross, the death of Jesus, makes Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit, possible and actual. Therefore, this is our biblical Word of God prophetic destiny to live and serve in the reality of the Spirit of God poured out upon us to live in the flow of grace and salvation and spirit enabling that Jesus has won and achieved for us on the cross. Therefore, can we get hold of this, that the things of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1, should matter to us. It needs to matter to us. This is not some sort of spiritual extra option or about following a particular church stream or denomination or a particular style of church. This is normal New Testament Christianity and this is why the Apostle Paul says, what I want to talk to you about now is the various ways God gets, uh, God's Spirit gets worked out into our lives. In John's Gospel, Jesus speaks about and promises us the Spirit in John 14. And I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. It's the, the person of the Holy Spirit, someone, a person, not some impersonal force or power, who is God, for he is the eternal spirit, another like Jesus. And he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, or another counsellor, or another friend, or another encourager, or, I, I like the translation, another helper, because as I put in my notes here, I need as much help as I can get. And he promises us one who, the word is, uh, one who comes alongside, a person to help, to comfort, to guide, to act as an advocate, a, our helper alongside us. Help is here. We haven't got to go into this week on our own. We haven't got to do church here and ministry here and mission here and fellowship here just on our own. The Holy Spirit who stays with us, who will never leave you. The Holy Spirit who, who leads us into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him and doesn't recognise him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. <coughs> with you? But not just with you, but that kind of external transcendent sort of picture of the spirit with but this remarkable statement in you speaks of deep real inward dwelling of the spirit of God within our lives a, a remarkable not with you it's almost enough with you, but no, a remarkable inner presence in you. It speaks of God closest to us, within us. God on the inside of the Christian disciple. You'd be uncertain whether to say such a thing unless Jesus actually said it. And we need to hold these two things together with that out, outside external, uh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God's holy transcendence, greatness, power, 
but also in us. As we also understand the shift from within, from with to in, that is made possible. Some of us prefer the idea with you. It feels there's a bit more distance and we're okay because we, we feel our with. But, but look, from the words of Jesus, there's this new now experience of something deeper, closer, much more personal. As we receive, as we welcome, as we ask, as we seek, as we look for a, a closer experience of the Spirit in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. And he did when he was raised from the dead. And he does as he comes to us by the Holy Spirit in these last now days of the Spirit. And he will come to us soon at his glorious appearing at the second coming again of Jesus. The Spirit, John 14, around us, with us, alongside us, in us, at work in us and through us. This leads us back to the things of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. And an important aspect of those Spirit of God things are the grace gifts. Those grace gifts of the Spirit which we can unpack and unwrap as we go on into 1 Corinthians 12. And as we pray, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and help us. Now to each one, a manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. We need to be a of the Spirit church and as whole life disciples committed to the things of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. For this is exciting, this is exciting salvation, living for God's stuff. For these are the days, these are the days of the Spirit. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. And that's what we will do as we come back together next time. But here we are in these days of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down, O oh comforter and friend. How we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come, Lord, come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, rain down. And we're going to leave the umbrellas aside. And we're going to go home spiritually drenched, saturated, wet. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven. Open it wide over your church, over this church, over our lives. I'd love that you'd be able to stand with me, sing these words, pray these words, and for the Spirit to rain down upon us. Because truly these are the days of the Spirit poured out. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Oh, comforter and friend. Now we need your touch again.
the water that flows from you our crucified risen saviour
living God. Holy Spirit, you are everywhere, but by grace, would you be at work, especially here? We, we thank you for being with us. But Lord, how we thank you that you are at work in us. So, Lord Jesus, let the Spirit come in power and let the gifts be distributed in your church. Help us, help her to steward these gifts in a wise, loving and biblical way. Let your church be always built up, encouraged, enabled and let your name be always glorified. So come, Holy Spirit, in these days. We pray for the continuing outpouring of Pentecost upon your church, upon this church. Revive your people. O oh Lord, and restore in our time the honour of your name as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.